I am the spectator. I am he who spectates. I scour the universe in search of a very special card game. Well, I skipped the Crab Nebula because, you know, you. But now my search is over. Ever wish you could share your love of comics and superheroes and collectible card games with your whole family? Now you can with Superpower Smash Masters! It's your friendly neighborhood superhero parody card game. In Superpowered Smash Masters, or Spasm. Spasm? Can we say that? Inappropriate. In Spasm, you assemble teams of heroes and build decks around what your heroes can do. And what is it they do, you ask? Protect the innocent? Stamp out injustice? No, we go find some rival heroes to smash. Yes, because that's what superheroes do. Tell them about the hero cards and do it right. Uh, each hero has a special power. They can benefit your team or they can melt your enemy's faces. Right on. If your heroes smash all the other heroes, you win, punk. Don't call them that. The game's content is appropriate for kids. I mean, most kids. Not feral kids. Never hand your cards to a feral kid. Not if you want your hand back. Well, uh, this is a parody game, lovingly crammed full of comic book cliches and pop culture references. Because we're nerds. The content's rated G. I mean, it would be if people rated card games. It's a deck building game the whole family can play together. Thanks for checking out our game. We're grateful for your support. Learn more about Smash Masters by checking out our gameplay video. Do it. Until next time, don't say it. Excelsior!
Хоча покажу, як кожен спортсмен піднімає вигляд. Покажи. Можемо почати з Тірексу. А, блядь, що ще ж уйдем? Okay, that's better. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> how you doing, Ratten? Good to see you. And Omarosa here says hello. And so what just happened was, turn the camera on, this, that wire, sorry about the noise, that's uh, my counterbalance on the mic stand, that wire was not plugged in. It was curled up in the back of my desk. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, Every day is a disaster. <laughs> so, anyway, how you define disaster, but lighthearted ones are fine. Anyway, glad to see you guys here. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be going over a couple of books that for some reason remind me of 4th of July. And I think I know why one of them, but I don't know why the other. So, uh, yeah. And then, or before that, let's see what we got. Yes, we have mail. Oh, ah, I forgot to look at what's in this first package to see if it's even something I should be opening on a stream about indie comics. So, all right, little housekeeping. Take the intro, remove it from my studio. There we go. So, uh, this, week, this week has been hectic. These two weeks have been hectic. I've been building computers for people, and it's, it's nuts. Uh, so I got a friend who asked me about an XP box for his wife, and they gave me uh, his old computer, and I got to rip that apart. And then I find like, it's not booting. And he's like, right. I didn't know if it was the motherboard or the power supply. I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to know? It's an old Dell. But I think the Dells use standard ATX, if that means anything to you. Um, ATX power supply connectors, because why wouldn't they? Uh, you get a generic power supply that you can replace. But the motherboards are very different. And then um, I think in some Dells, where the screws are that attach the motherboard to the case is totally different. And I finally realized I can just plug in the power supply and stick a probe in, in the ground and then test, you know, look up the ATX standard and then just test all the way down all the pins on the connectors and like figure out if his, if his power supply works, duh. So I've been so busy. It took me a week to realize I can just do that. Anyway, that's about it. And I've been having, um, I guess, boring fun with, if you call it fun, <laughs> rebuilding these guys. Um, yeah, I'm doing work for, for people on the side. There we go, get the connector out of the way. There's another connector that connects at the front end, but I got a, the blue tape is so I can yank it back, back out of there. That's a test drive. I've already replaced the, uh, the memory. It's, it's becoming like a rhythm. It's just battery, memory, drive, and you know, spruce it up and get things installed for people. Yeah, so lots of, uh, lots of just tedium and being very careful with screws and 
all that stuff is going on. And then there's and then there's jujitsu class, which is why we're all here. I want to show something about jujitsu while I pretend I'm not breaking this and put it aside. Okay, that is not a winning move. <laughs> Just, if, if you didn't know, I think what happens here, first off, it's it's considered bad form to just pull guard. It's considered a newbie thing. Pulling guard is you jump up on the guy standing and put your let your you yank him down into your legs. Um, that's pulling guard. Full guard is both legs around the opponent's waist. You're on your back. So as this guy, I might well, there's no mouse there, but the uh, behind the red and the black, there's a gray and a gray and black with the uh, the slightly chubbier uh, ref. Anyway, so them, <laughs> I believe it's an illegal move. I was asked earlier today if it's an illegal move. If you're doing that, what we what really happened isn't guard. We didn't see how they got into it down there, but he's got one leg in and one leg around the neck. His right leg is around the guy's is aiming for around the guy's neck. He's going for a triangle choke. He does not have it. He does have his ankles crossed behind the guy's head. To get out of it, standing up is a good move. Although you don't you don't put your butt up first you posture up first but this got him out um at this point the dude in gray should be unhooking his ankles dropping to the floor so he doesn't get slammed <laughs> okay <laughs> and getting into what's called a k guard which is a little bit of a of a twist so can we move me around no we can't um do, 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 do it make me bigger okay so in a k guard let's see uh this is somebody's back facing down this well you can't see with my fingers this would be a full guard a k guard you turn sideways and and drop your butt down um so that it, yeah you and from there if his butt hit the mat he'd be getting options to go after the guy's legs in other ways whoa wrong way uh yeah he'd give him options to turn into the guy's legs or take a couple other moves yeah anyway i think the opponent in black whoops oh no that's wrong Sorry, misclick. I think the opponent in black just got frustrated. And, uh, whoop, took out the good part. Just got frustrated because this looks like he's deliberately running him over to the table and dropping him on it um, for something not getting called. That's it. But, yeah, if somebody picks you up, you don't hang on and go for a ride. You're just asking for a head injury then. <laughs> All right, we can remove that. So where was it? Uh, there it is. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, don't go for a ride. You'll get slammed. All right, so brought that out, showed off the back. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we will open things up and let people arrive. This is local comic shop mail order stuff. And I do get a DC comic in here or two, but I forgot to look at the list of what's coming to see if I should refrain from opening it on the stream. And, of course, it's it's got the packing list in it evil packing lists. Whoopsie. I'm going to turn that down. Check on something real quick. Mm -hmm. Apparently Justin trains like an idiot on Twitter has been hitting PRs today. That's that's how he nicknamed himself. I'm not calling him an idiot. Okay, and that looks like I have a few messages that I don't need to respond to, which is what I was checking for. There we go. All right, cool. I'll close that tab. And put that aside. Uh, yeah. There's stuff in here we can show. Cool. There's also stuff in here I can't show. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Ah, get off me, tape. Now let's see what we got. So, pull all these out and throw 
Paper to the wind. There we go. Goodbye, bag. Why do I have this? What is this? I do not remember what that is. Battle chasers, gorilla men, which I think that yeah, the reason this is a riff on something else, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and um, sorry if I'm quiet. Yeah, that's a riff on the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which I have not read, and Edgar Rice Burroughs. I think they're they're riffing the two together, and of course uh, Liam Sharp and then uh, Gary Shipman. So we'll take a look at each. If if I had already shown off to you. There we go. These, this should be black and white. This is the Blood Moon LCS version, which is going out in black and white. If I had flipped through the um, the hardcovers of these, you would have already seen uh, what's in this one. But So we've seen Shipman's work a bunch. I am a fan. There we go. Shipman's a good guy. Okay. Uh, I keep forgetting to do this. I have notes, but I forget to do this. Please... Uh, Hit the little buttons for the thumb, whichever way you want. If you don't like something about the stream, come back later and make a comment in the comments below. Um, they're not available during live streams. Yeah, so hit like if you would, and then tweet about the stream if you would. Oh, that's cool. That's gruesome cool. <laughs> wow. Somewhere in the storyline, he meets, an, I think, an older version of himself. It's been a long time since I read it. Uh, this almost looks like pencils. Um, but yeah, our little mouse meets a, a version of himself that's maybe older. I gotta reread this. All right. So cool stuff. This would be number three. Uh, yeah, number three. Scientist captures him. Cool stuff. I think that's that's a nice page spread. <laughs> Little x-rays. <laughs> okay. You know, I think my camera looks better ever since I uninstalled the Logitech software for it. All right, so thanks, Gary Shipman. Oh, yeah. Um, especially tweet about the stream if there's something you hate. So, you know, I prefer that you like things, but, you know, don't feel the need to censor yourself. <clears throat> so, Liam Sharp is doing. Now, yeah, here's Liam Sharp's name, but he's way down there. What did he do in this besides the cover? Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't talk most of the day, and then I do a stream. Yeah. Okay, writers are uh, Clunan and Conrad. That's why there are two names before Liam's. All right, not just one. Artist is Liam Sharp. Letter is Troy P Petri, and he did the... Or Petri. And yes, Liam did the cover with other very covers by David Rubin, Kevin Van Hook, and Andrew Dal Dalos, D-A-L House. All right. The last thing I saw from Liam, Liam Sharp was um, a book whose name I can't remember. And then before that was uh, Green Lantern. So uh, his Green Lantern stuff got a, got really weird and squiggly, but um, this is much cooler. If you saw his Brave and the Bold from years ago, I liked that a lot, art-wise. Always, always good to look at Liam Sharp. It, this just looks like he's taken oil paintings and run them through a computer. So it, it meshes well. There we go. Yeah, this is very cool. In my very early comics days was uh, when um, well, there were hard copies or hardcover copies sitting around of Dave McKeon's Arkham Asylum, written by Grant Morrison. You know, weird book. My brother said it was too psychological for him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that got me hooked because of the, the paintings in that one. That was right when Dave McKeon was starting to work on, um, on, Sa on was it Sandman covers? Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, adverts. 
That seemed a little short. I'm going to have to count that one up later. So that's from Valiant, of course. And let's see. I'll get to that in a sec. I know people are hot for that one. <laughs> Why don't they angle their tape? So this is from, this may be in black and white. I don't know. This is from American, as you can see the name, American uh, Mythology Productions. And let's see. Nope, not black and white. I have no idea what the art looks like. They are the ones who did the uh, the monsters where they're doing their own versions of the universal monsters. And there we go. And those uh, those are where they put out the little anthologies where it's three stories or one third of a story in in each issue and then three issues long. And it's like, why don't you just put out one story per issue? <laughs> so anyway, um, I think that would that would go well. You can have an, an anthology series without each book being an anthology. But they do a pretty good job with other stuff, so I thought I'd give this a chance. Well, just a cartoony style, nothing too big. A little bit Bronze Agey, not entirely. So. Yeah, the coloring like this on the fur isn't quite Bronze Age. But. And then uh, some of the shapes here. Whoa, that's nasty. Some of the shapes here remind me a bit of um, cartoons from, I guess it'd be around uh, 2000. When, when was that? 2000? Yeah. Just the way some of the things are drawn. Okay. So gorillas are going crazy. Uh-huh. Because it is the Le Legion of Exceptional Gorilla Men. All right. That's going to be odd. Battle Chasers, the new series. I have yet to get it. Good evening, Chael. How are you? Happy almost 4th of July. It's 4th of July somewhere on the planet. Let's take a look at Battle Chasers. Oh, Jail. Um, a little bit ago in the stream, we had some uh, Mouse of Might, but I assume you've seen that stuff. It's issue three from Blood Moon. So Battle Chasers by Joe... Joe Mad. But Joe Madveria? I can't say his name. I think I'm just getting the, the basic A covers. All right, so we get some catch-up work. This is not a comic book. This is a comic book. I still need to get a trade paperback of one through nine, and I've looked at the prices. There is no way. Happy Fourth of July, almost. There's no way I'm buying individual issues of one through nine. <laughs> so if you want to get me something for Christmas in July, hey. So nighttime scene, color gradient. I wonder if the whole book is at night. All right, let's skip a few pages. Nighttime with fire. This is cool. I like his style. I mean, a lot of people do, but I do. Skip a few pages. So I don't know who the guy, because I haven't read this at all. I don't know who the guy with the flock of seagulls uh, hair thingy in the front is or why that's there. <laughs> so let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine panels. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure it flows. I'll know better when I look at it upside right and read it. It seems like a lot of attention here is being is being given here to using um, specific lighting that de that discolors everything. But it is a nighttime scene. That looks like Return of the Jedi, right up here. <laughs> you know, uh, Jabba the Hutt's palace. All right. So I have no idea what this is about. I haven't read it yet. 
And then one last one. I think I think I threw this on as a joke. Or it's a freebie. I do not know. I think this might be some kind of parody book. I have no idea. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I didn't even order it. Dang, that was a good piece of tape I just wasted. Okay. The right project cover 1A and it's in a secondary bag. That was easy. There we go. Let me take a peek at this. Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends. I... Okay, they're trying to look a little bit Bronze Age. I mean, not the same color scheme, and they've got more cell shade gradients in here. Um, but that's not cell shade, excuse me. Yeah, a little bit more gradient in certain places. But they're going for that old white border. I have no idea what this is. I'd have to look it up. I think it's a satire of, of superhero books. I could be wrong. Yeah, not a clue. Anyway, so thanks for joining in. Let's move on. And it's well drawn. I mean, and when I say well drawn, of course, you guys know I don't know staging and my flow is sometimes off when I look things upside down. But, you know, I can see anatomy is good. They've got backgrounds. They got a lot of backgrounds. Not cheap on the backgrounds. All right, I'm gonna. I got a mystery to solve now. Let me put this away. All right. We'll get to the next one. Okay, from Bad Beaver Comics in Canada. I think I know what this is. Uh, you, why? Why do you? Why do they do this? <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, this is a book I reviewed previously, and it's the last two issues of the series, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. Whoops. There you go. All my life, scissors have had orange handles. There we go. Okay. Yep. It's the last two issues of Fallen from, oh, I can't remember his name. Matt Ringle. Yeah. That guy. Let's take a peek at this. I reviewed one through four kind of in one fell swoop. Uh, this should be five and six. And, ooh, a little snug. There we go. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's he's up on another book now called Alice and that was on Kickstarter for a little while by the time Alice number two comes out you'll probably be able to get number one nice covers his pacing is pretty good in terms of uh, his the way he was re revealing the mystery as we go uh, five six yeah uh, revealing the mystery as we go it you sort of see who the the villain is by the end of number four and it all makes sense yeah, so at the beginning of each book, he has this little chalice dripping and then filling with blood, and now it's overflowing. Let's see what we got. Come in some pages. Interesting. These are all the, the gods from different mythologies. Some of them were sent down to Earth or dropped down to Earth, and they've been ruling the place like, like it's a gangland. And uh, let's see. Oh, I was told I was a bit quiet last time. I'm going to bring that up. There we go. On Dojo Kun's uh, stream, we got to be careful not to talk over each other at the wrong time. So I turned myself down a little. But uh, yeah. Anyways, when I read it, I'll be able to remember if, if this is Thor with the hammer or if it's one of his brothers. I forget. I forget who's who. But Loki and Apollo had been joining up to run drugs in New York. <laughs> and um, it turns out they were doing it for somebody else who, uh, how that all relates. So I'll, uh, I'll leave for you to read it. <laughs> so. 
looks like the Egyptians are confronting everybody. Oh, that's cool. These Valkyries coming down. Seems like there's more action in this one than in some of the previous ones, but it's getting to that end. So somebody's making peace. Because by the end of number four, all the different um, religions were ready to tear each other apart. All their, all their different pantheons. All right. Now, I don't know what that little lipstick bullet thing was here, but it plays a role in, in most of the murders that have been going on. They've been passing those around. Check out some, some of the art in this. There we go. The coloring is shifting, I think. Like this, this looks a little bit different from what I'm used to seeing. This might be a flashback or something, but it, it looks less precise than the rest of the art. Uh, Henry Ponciano. Did he do all the books? Yeah, he's in both. It's an interesting shot. Reading and someone in the background. I think that's a good place to stop. All right. So the art's good. You know, it tells the story. I think, you know, lack of backgrounds is perfectly fine. Uh, you don't need to overdo it. Luke Stone is uh, the master of not overdoing backgrounds. And because this came two in one, I'll get it its own new little bag and board. One on the front. These are double-sided boards. And one on the back. Ooh, snug. Okay, last one. Go. I wonder if it's a genuine comic. <laughs> so those who know probably know what this is already. Uh, let's see. Yep, there it is. Oh, yes. Oh, there's stuff in there. Perfect 10. Number... There's no number. Three. Number three. There we are. It's been here a little while. I've got 16 more packages to open. <laughs> All right. So go through the toys first. This feels like it. Yep, got a magnet. Cool. Weird texture on it. It's very uh Yeah, the ink is real texture is all textured except for the white background. And here are all of our our players. And then these chibi forms of them. They're not normal trading card size. They're smaller. So that's a little unusual. All right. So I don't know why I'm feeling quieter today. Like, oh, I had that one upside down. <laughs> you know, like, I'm trying not to talk too much. I'm doing, oh, speaking of which, um, if I, I'm going through some work changes and stuff like that, depending on how things work out, it makes it harder. It'll make it a little bit harder for me to read 
during the week. Uh, and this is by Randy Green and Brian Magne. Okay. It'll make it a little harder for me to read during the week, but um, it may make it easier for me to do streams, meaning on Mondays I can do a stream earlier instead of later, uh, maybe two or three hours earlier. So we'll see how that works out, and hopefully it'll, it'll be good. Let's see, this one is by Pow, P-O-W Rodericks, R-O-D-R-I-X, and uh, Frederico Siok. Uh, All right. Hot women everywhere. So here's 10 again, and 10 isn't in this one. Um, let's see. The Prime Syndicate by uh, Joe Bennett, it's the name I've heard, Chris Siswoyo, Cis name I don't know, and Brian Maggot, I can't, I can't pronounce his name again. All right. Oh, t uh, 10 and Stellar by, again, Pal Rodericks and uh, Federico Siok. Siok? Siok. Cool. Hmm. These two have something in common. I wonder what it is. <laughs> I wonder what things they have in common. So. Oh, come on. Get over there. There we go. And this is just a board. Okay. Let's take a look. Brink, Rodericks, and Rodrigue. It looks like Rodriguez. Yeah, picking up where we left off. Just an odd little world. So hopefully, if I get to stream earlier on Monday nights, um, what will happen is then I can invite guests on because people will actually be available since right now I'm streaming at midnight for real. And, and if I stream earlier than midnight, pardon me a moment, put things, putting things away. If I can stream earlier than midnight, then people would actually be available to come on. So what I think would be really great is uh, just finding people, uh, particularly other creators, who have gotten some of the same indie books that I've gotten and having them on to say what they liked about the books. That would be really cool. I'd love that. Set that aside. So not everything has to be a grid and I think he does a nice job of keeping it interesting. I like the fact that even though it's just a conversation on a bench, we still get some movement going on. That that's a good good deal. Cool. Looking forward to this one. We get talk, we get action. We get controversy because of that thing about how women don't bend like that. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> I like the coloring, I like the contrast, you know. It's pretty well thought out. Keep it basic, keep it simple. Have it mean something. Cool. Okay. Slide this way. So I got a couple of books to talk about. Um, this past week, oh, I know that, by the way, if, uh, if you're here, I know that I'm streaming up against uh, Nick Ricada and 80s Made Comics and uh, what's his name? Uh, Clint Stoker. Both started an hour before I did and then Nick Ricada like five minutes before me. I forgot he, he goes on Monday nights. So, uh, okay. So for tonight, it's a stack. I did not, I was not able to read Nephilim Squadron yet. I'm 10 pages in and, and got pulled aside for other things. I want to get it done. It is just a preview, but I'm going to have to hold off on it for a while. I tried to read 94. <laughs> I have my first impressions from the first few pages, but then more things came up. So 
I really do hope to get to these in the next few weeks. I can't promise I'm going to get to them next week. It's it's uh, sometimes I like to go for stuff I've already read. So and I've got some extras for ninety four to show off when I get to around to talking about it. So there's those. Well, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a werewolf book. Oh boy. <laughs> and relentless tin soldier by and I'm probably going to say this wrong. Is it Nicholas Gear? And uh, and this is why. Um, Okay, my VPN just said I was disconnected. Hopefully we're we're back, but uh, yeah, successfully connected again. All right, sorry, my VPN just blinked on me. It does that once in a while. Um, anyway, the character's a cop initially, so this whole thing gets to be patriotic as well. Um, as much as I have trouble trusting cops, I know that that's only because of very, very few bad cops out there. And uh, it's not the majority, but you never, you know, it's like a one in 20, minimum 20, one in 20 gamble. So just be careful, be respectful. And hopefully if you're running across a bad one, you know, maybe it's one in a hundred, then, uh, you know, if, as long as you stay innocent, they, they won't, they, they can't screw with you. So uh, really sorry to see the way things are going. Okay. So this has a lot of covers. I'm going to make some space. We'll get to these in a little bit later. And werewolves. What could be more American than werewolves? Unless you're Romanian, of course. Then they're Romanian. So set that down. Nightwolf. Nightwolf is a series. And I did not get number one. I decided to finally pick up on it when there was a trade paperback. This is volume one. I know it's facing me, not you right now. It was put out by Lone Wolf Comics. So when I try to go to the website, if you look in the description of the video for links, Instead of Night Wolf Comics, which I kept typing and wouldn't come up, it's Lone Wolf Comics. So, uh, yeah, don't mix that one up. It is by another name I can't pronounce, Robert A. Multari, M-U-L-T-A-R-I. He's the writer and one of the artists. Letters by Herrera, Carlos Herrera. Uh, created by Multari. Soft and hardcover arts by Carlos Herrera. Variant soft cover by Chris Williams. I think this is a variant. Or no, I think this is the regular. Anyway. You can tell the difference if you look on the, their website for all the covers, how time really went into the covers. And it's just like traditional comics, but the interiors aren't quite up to what the covers were. Anyway, uh, soft and hard covers. Variant, variant cover inks by Jake, Jake Enselberg. Uh, very soft cover by Kat Melvin. All right, those weren't the credits I was looking for. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to read, th read this page. Story script and letters by Multari, line art by Herrera, and then colors by Campbell and Herrera. Um, also line art by Choca Chococota Ale. Oscar Chococota Ale. I am totally messing up that middle name. Anyway, the art varies a bit, and I think that's, that can be a problem. The dreamscape it opens with is pretty cool. You see the, the flowing us back here, and our character sticks out a bit. Some of the early pages here reminded me a lot of uh, what some cartoons used to look like. I'm trying to remember which cartoon. Oh, gar uh, Gargoyles. There's just some element to it that I think worked a bit like how Gargoyles had certain shapes and certain shades in it, even though a lot of it was cell shading, but still. You see the, the story opens in a dream sequence, and... Our hero is being is being beset by zombies, because who doesn't love that? He runs to a castle, sees his girlfriend dying, and uh, he has to protect her from zombies. She's being attacked by a werewolf, and then he w wakes up from the nightmare alongside her. These are teenagers. They're only 17, living in their parents' houses, but they're sleeping together. <laughs> it's like, huh, how, do, how does that whole I'm spending the night over there work? They actually explain that later. <laughs> so her friends are lying for her about about where she is. So um, yeah, all the friends, all of her friends are covering for her, which is why she gets to stay. I think at his parents' place or him at her place, whichever it doesn't matter. 
Um, and then over here, we see some kind of wizard whose name I forget. And he is watching things through his cauldron. So he's scrying. S-K-R-Y-I-N-G. And let's see. Oh, just a sec. Wrong button. So uh, I'm timing this. Make sure everything comes through. They're in high school. That's basically it. And one of their buddies is like full beard dude back here. And they're just going over basic high school problems. So my first impressions of the book. Every time I opened it, I'd hear a crack. And you get this thing, you know, the, the, the binding is there where it's got the indent so that the, the cover should fold right there. But as usual, the first page is always the one that gets pulled off. And, and again, and then it opens way too far after that first page. They all do this. Um, every time I turn a page, I'd hear a crack. It's not doing it now. So I really wondered about that. And then here's the, the interest sewing for the middle of the signature. So that, uh, let's see how many sheets we got on this side. Should be four. One, two, three. Yeah, just four. So this is a standard signature, 16 pages. Or, I'm sorry, a small signature, eight pages. Hold on, I can't count. H, four on one side. Yeah, time short. Yeah, 16 pages. Sorry about that. Anyway, here we get it again. It really got to be where I'm not pulling hard. Um, if, if you guys have seen me on previous streams, I don't grab the book and yank. But between every signature, you can, or in the middle of each signature, if, and if you don't know what a signature is because you're newer, you know, the glue. I can just barely get a thumbnail in there. So it's getting worse. But a lot of the pages, even in the middle, just fall right open. It's staying together for now. But as I progressed with reading the book, that little tunnel developed. So this is kind of sketchy. <laughs> um, maybe if I warmed it up or something, you know, got it, you put a cloth over it and then a, an iron, if, if that might help remelt the glue. I don't know but it looks like the signatures are coming out. So what are signatures? Just in case people don't know what signatures are, I whipped this up real quick. Um, if you have a sheet and the way they print things, I'm going to say this really fast because most of you probably know it. Here are all the page numbers for the sheet. 116, or actually, if you're reading this way, 4, 13, 16, 1. Rotate. 8, 9, 12, 5. And then on the other side are all the remaining pages. Just, all right. So you, if you print a sheet like this and then fold it three times and then you cut the edges, so the, these folds get removed, the folds on the back side here get removed along with, you know, a little extra there and the, the extra comes off the bottom, you get a hinge back here and you get all 16 pages in order. So here's number one as I read it. And then inside are two and three. Whoops. Four, five six, seven, eight, nine in the middle, just like that. And so a signature is what this was called when I was uh, doing yearbook in, in uh, middle school and high school. So that's what they taught us. This is how it's all done. Okay. So what's, in, well, what's interesting about old comics is there were a lot of DC and Marvel comics when I first started reading around Sandman and Chris Claremont's X-Men days, where for a while they were th really 32 pages. And so it's two of these and then nested together and then staple that with a cover on it. So you get, you know, nine sheets, the cover is one sheet and then eight sheets inside like that. And it gives you 32 pages interior. And then I noticed Marvel started skimping on that and I'm going, what's going on here. And somehow they got, they got it down so that, um, there were only, they removed one sheet. So it was only 28 pages inside. And then the cover counts as a 32 page book. And that's when I knew, like, everybody's just cheap in the world. All right, let's get to the story. So the book is a little scary that it's not holding together. Maybe I got a dried out copy. I don't know. Oh, the back, back end of the book has cover art and other art compilation. This looks like it's from a wraparound cover here. This is also misleading. I, there's not... This lady isn't a vampire in the book, so... That's cool. He's wearing armor. Don't know why. Although you find out in the book. That's the cover I have on here. Skip, skipped one. 
whoops, there we go. So that's interesting. Now, after reading the book, I know what this means. These are all the baddies, as it were. I think it's all the baddies. She may not be. But... I forget where she fits in. All right, so through the book, I started wondering if what happens happens, why doesn't the whole world know about it? And then that becomes an element. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Real quick, it's just a high school vampire book. That's it. Um, coming of age stuff. So the whole allegory of turning into something else fits. Uh, it's got the literary aspect there. So he's out with his buddies here. It's going to be his birthday on Saturday, which is also homecoming. He's on the football team, whatever. And little side conversations between the girls all seem very realistic, except they are talking about him. And yes, she has things planned for his birthday. And then, um, you know, so, oh, so you need me to cover for you again? And that's, that's pretty much what's here. These guys are joking around. You get personalities out of this, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, he, he's sick of this dude's crap. So, you know, a lot of horseplay. And then suddenly hot chick walks up, grabs him, starts flirting with him. And when he doesn't like it, brings out her sister twin. Okay. Um, the goth twin of that. Like, sure. <laughs> All right. Um, and you, you can kind of guess what's going on because somewhere in here, he says to send, I forget the guy's name, dark claw or whatever after, after our, our main hero, and uh, and then this is foreshadowing. There's a lot of foreshadowing. This is four issues long. Um, and the fourth issue is really kind of a half issue and then setting up everything for the next arc. So the, the fourth issue is really a crossover between the prior arc and the next arc. Um, we get different bad guys. They're all visiting. They have all their banter and whatnot. They they have their lackeys. This This guy who looks like he sings for the strokes or something. Um, and then the girls who are our hero's ex-girlfriends start getting attacked by monsters and taken in. Uh, this this one, she's surprised, so he gives her a lethal wound, gives her a choice to join him or die. And this is and then when she chooses to join him by mumbling, uh, he basically says, Oh, by the way, this damns your soul. <laughs> so like, nice bargain. You know, good to always know the terms of a contract before you enter into it. All right, moving on. So people are disappearing. He's wondering, people are obviously talking. This is weird. And this is one complaint I had about the book is in the lettering. Um, <laughs> it's the haircut, man. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to pop. Yeah, thank you. Because <laughs> it's the haircut. So anyway, um, sometimes the lettering in this is a little bit off. We read left to right, then top to bottom. And this book is in English. So... You know, this works because even though she's over there, it still dominates over here. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So you, you don't always have to do this with your balloons and create a giant zipper of balloons down the middle. So he doesn't do that. The balloons are, are nicely spaced. Um, this is just an attack on a pregnant woman, which is really weird. Um, and she runs and I think she gets away. I forget. I failed to see the importance of her. There's foreshadowing and things early that come up later that I forgot by the time I get to later. In fact, I'm not sure who this white wolf lady is because I don't think it's the same lady who shows up later. In, um, or no, it should be because her text is green and I bet she speaks with an Irish accent, which is written in the text. So it should be her. But by the time I got to her later, I forgot that she was in this passage. So he's trying to do a good job with the, I think he's doing a good job with the writing of trying to establish things and foreshadow things. But then we forget those things were before we get to them later. This foreshadow, this introducing her now has more to do with world building for, for what's going on now to tell us what kind of world we're in than it has to do with her showing up later to save our hero. Anyway, uh, back to you don't realize this right away. The lighting on here is not good that you don't realize this is the same woman, but she's saying her bedtime prayers and gets a vision of this guy. So how does this all work? This is actually a really cool world. Um, apparently this dude, they're capturing a ghost. So this is how you get introduced to FBI agents. 
So we're told we're shown right away that they know there's a paranormal world out there, which then becomes if the gigantic massacre we're about to witness at homecoming dance. Oh, and the, by the way, the freaky ladies come back to hit on him some more. Um, but at homecoming dance, he rejects their, uh, yeah, finish one sentence. If the giant massacre we're about to witness happens, why does the world not already know more about werewolves? That gets explained. So he actually puts that in the story. I think the writing, you know, uh, granted some of the dialogue could use some punching up. The writing is pretty good. So on this page, for example, um, his thoughts are always in blue. I don't like the fact that we're given his, his thoughts in a narration. Sometimes he's narrating, sometimes he's thinking. That could be improved, I think. Uh, give, me, give me thought balloons for thoughts. Give me narration balloons for narration. So some of this is appropriate to be narrating, and some of it's not. So it's all done this way. Okay. So he's, he's narrating to us in present tense, which is a little bit weird. So anyway. Um, oh, by the way, you can still get this book if you're interested in joining the series. Links are in the description. There we go. Also, he does Kickstarters for his new floppies. Um, I put his Kickstarter profile in the description. So there we are. And then, of course, my usual set of like a bajillion links is still down there. But back to the book. And we see here, so we have slanted panel break here from outside to inside. The color, pretty similar. You know, my eye didn't quite catch that. You know, what is this light? Oh, that's the moon right away. Um, it's his birthday. He's turning 18. He's very excited, uh, you know, because she's hot. And this slanted panel again, it makes room for this panel, and we don't need everything here. This is where the evil women are coming back with their own dates. But it's hard to... Let me reread this myself for a moment. Um, we come down here, read this. Okay, yeah. So for me, yes, my eye is led down... But then naturally to read left to right, I'm going to jump back over here. And I read this one first because I'm everything, all the, the ceiling is sl slanted down there. Oops, I got lost. Your eye is supposed to be led down here straight to this word balloon. So is it an error or is it me? I think it's a little bit of both. I think this is kind of a poor design, but really it's me too. You know, a lot more on me. So we read this panel down. We see the people supposed to come in here. So left to right strictly through the space puts this one first, then down puts that one second. Okay, he did this a few times, and I think it suffered in later panels where, you know, again, I jumped to the wrong one first because I'm very left to right and not top left to right down, you know. Um, it's a little bit of me. So they come back. The, he's rebuffing their their uh, advances again. And the principal walks, walks over to try and break it up. So they turn him into a, a demon. And uh, there's even a discussion here from the witch girls. I, you know, we're not allowed to do demonic transformations. And it's, you know, how do you have this happen and not have witnesses? Well, you kill all the witnesses. <laughs> it is a bloodbath. And he's trying to save his girlfriend. Oof is in blue because that's him. For whatever reason, notice. This, oh, that's a split. I bet anything. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right there. That book's coming apart. And I don't abuse this, you know, I'm just trying to read it. It's nice that it lays flat. So yeah, this is going to, this is going to pull apart into a series of, of sewn together pieces. Ugh. Anyway, outside, um, this guy, the singer for, for the strokes catches up to him and, uh, is basically prompting him to transform. So they've got, they've kidnapped the girl already. She's watching this. She's bound up and watching this. He's beating the guy, and he's just not allowed to kill him. So this dude has a gigantic, massive, powerful transformation, and then suddenly we're looking at other things. Our evil people from the prom are coming back to Cauldron House. Uh, he sees this th through the cauldron, so, you know, oh, what was that? And then we're just given this random other scene, but the purpose for it is that, yeah, this world is really weird, and there are creatures there that, that the general public doesn't know about, so all this stuff happens. People are feeling the shock wave for it a long ways away. It's like this world doesn't know that there are superheroes in it. So the superheroes are a secret, <laughs> I guess. And there are vampires everywhere. <laughs> so this world is very suddenly changing from normal to not normal. And how do normal people not know about this? But apparently they do. So when our FBI agents show up, here's his transformed form. 
and he's going to fight the uh, the Strokes guy. So, in his transform or sorry, uh, transform form, yeah. So the the world doesn't know about this, as we see through the police, peop- uh, the police detectives' eyes when they come to investigate all the violence and whatnot, and police get called for all the dead bodies all over the school gym. Um, he defeats him in a fight. Interestingly, he cuts him with a silver knife. So the werewolf, werewolf is carrying silver. His thoughts in here were really not given much of his thoughts. It's all red text. It's all the other dude's thoughts. And so he's not doing well with his initial transformation. It's like he doesn't know he's a werewolf. And that comes out. So I thought this was good writing in that when it comes out, uh, he wakes up in the hospital 24 hours later, or almost 20, like 18 hours later, sorry. But he starts thinking to himself and asking himself questions and says, wait a minute, did I turn into a werewolf? But he's so not worried about there being a werewolf there. Um, and why would he not be worried? Okay. Somewhere in here, another character, here's our FBI agent showing up in the hospital. He hears them from outside. I'm going to criticize the artwork on this page in a minute. Uh, from the out, fr- He hears them from the outside and flees. Now, in here, there's a comment I wanted to read that actually explains the characters. It's his thoughts. Okay, yeah. Down here, the Strokes guy, he's got her held, he's got the girlfriend, Jennifer, held prisoner. Um, this is them busting into the hospital room and finding he jumped out the window because they heard a crash. Um, so deep in the Appalachian Mountains is where everybody's, is where all the mystical beings are hi- hiding. Um, she's yelling, what do you want from me? For starters, shut up. I can't stand your voice. Uh, and your attitude is just pissing me off. Oh, yeah, tough guy. Um, you should have thought about that before you kidnapped me. And he's thinking, I miss the old days when scaring the crap out of humans was easier. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's cool. He says, nowadays, they're so damn desensitized. It should be a comma there. They're so damn desensitized, nothing phases them. So he's missing a comma. He's missing an apost- a apostrophe before M. All right. I can't wait till the boss wakes up and I can t- uh, I, and I can take her off my hands. I think his boss is a vampire. So this is sunset on Sunday evening after the prom on or the uh, homecoming, not prom, on uh, on Saturday night. So everybody's so damn desensitized. I like that Robert had the foresight in here, or, or not the foresight, but the presence of mind that somewhere he has to put in the world building so that we understand people's reactions as this is why react, certain reactions are normal. He wakes up in the hospital, where am I? And he's not panicking, yelling, angry, but he is thinking. Um, Got to get back to criticizing this artwork. This is where some of the artwork started to shift a bit. So doing the reflection in the mirror, that's pretty difficult. Uh, but he wakes up. I like how they did the lighting with all these stripes all over the place. It was annoying to look at, but I thought it was a really good move for the light coming through the blinds on the window. That was cool. But he's thinking about you know what's happening. Interestingly, he is having trouble healing, but he's primarily having trouble healing from where he was cut with the silver knife. And he's having trouble healing with where he was scratched in the side over here um, as he's taking the hospital gown off. But he's got scratched in the side by the other werewolf, so those are claw marks. So the mystical things have trouble uh, give him trouble healing. The non-mystical things he heals from pretty pretty well. Problem with the artwork here. Um, you if I've you've seen my previous streams, I've mentioned John Malin, who's a comic book artist from the mainstream, now doing indies under uh, under the Comicsgate banner. One moment. And to me, Malin's artwork was too, um, his chins would look too robotic. It's too angular where things aren't supposed to be angular. It's a style, but he still has his strong points. Well, here, the artwork here in issue three seems to shift a bit. This is just, part of it's the coloring. So good lines can be over, can be uh, not ruined, I want to say, but good lines can can be taken away from by coloring that goes the wrong direction. And so I think the 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 rounding shading on a lot of this what in the 90s looked to me like overdone computerization uh, shading, but maybe it I don't think it's the stripes from the Venetian blinds. He just looks like a Ken doll. You know, and it's that's just there's something a little off there where it's too precise but they're trying to make him look superhuman. That's where this is going. He's is he's now not just the uh the guy from the quarterback from the football team or whatever he was. He's not just the football dude who won won the uh, homecoming king. 
he's now superhuman and it just seems over emphasis over overemphasized in the shading where he just looks plastic and that for me that's a uh, not a good comic look and that shading exists over here so the coloring was really cool before and i thought it did fine even though it it's the same colorist and and whatnot um you know it still has that quality to it but it wasn't it wasn't bad now it seems to be making things look more plastic so that's a problem uh i think i jumped pages which is fine oh yeah okay so they're talking he escapes the hospital he goes back to the um the school to get his, his jeep he drives home and he sees his parents nailed up and murdered over the fireplace that's just hideous and then all these other monsters are coming after him why didn't the other guy just grab him when he knocked him out like what was going on by the way when he's back at the school um he sees the graffiti that was left behind which i should show you on a better on a previous page where it's bigger and it's when he wakes up or sorry when he's found back in his human form asleep there we go join us uh join us or suffer the consequences this weird little font here it's like where did he get a paintbrush to write this in that font in blood you know and it's his blood and he comments that he knows it's his blood because he can smell it from here so and he has a change of clothes in the in the car and he gets home from there or so there are the fbi agents they're talking about wanting all the records and I, I had forgotten that these guys were introduced to us earlier on in the book because of just reading one issue a day and I didn't piece together these guys were from that prior scene. So, you know, I'm kind of dumb. I don't know. Anyway, this moves really quickly. Our white wolf jumps into the house to help save him because she's tracking him down. They fight a battle. They have to escape. We're introduced to Lex Luthor over here who is... Uh, yeah okay so they transform back we actually get to see them have half transformed they start talking he doesn't know who to trust um there is an emotional scene probably coming up because they haven't left the house yet we're this guy lex luther here summered summoned an, an a seraphim angel and offers him one of the coins that judas was paid in exchange for whatever he wants um to look at something i forget what and the the transaction is denied. He's like, I thought you'd say that, and brings out the other transaction he made for this guy, our prior villain, to jump out and help kill the angel. So the angel dies. They divvy up the spoils between the body, which is what Lex Luthor really wanted, and the armor and weapons, which is what this guy was willing to take. And so, okay, everybody wins, I guess, in this demonic pact. And then we're on to issue four. They're cleaning up the house. They're leaving the house. All the, the creatures that attacked him before were drones controlled from they, they were kids from the high school and so after they get killed and they transform back he recognizes the people he's just been killing to defend himself as people he knew from school that's really intense so here he's starting to have emotions and and uh, over his parents as well but you know he's getting sad and whatnot then he, he sees his parents mom and dad and that's what breaks him so she this incredibly hot woman is trying to comfort him um she's very old by the way i don't know how old she is but apparently they do not live short lives like vampires live long long times and she's saying pack up we got to get out of here it's too late people are already coming and they just leave without him him grabbing stuff he needs and then it turns into exposition time where the the cops are going through and finding things we we get reconfirmed that this is normal for these fbi guys we get some background history and then it's just more exposition so this world is cool and interesting it's split between um one clan of were of werewolves split if they're gonna destroy humanity or just not not to defend humanity but just not destroy them and so the mongrels which i thought meant like not purebreds were the ones who wanted to destroy humanity and the clan down from there and then the purebreds which is why i thought the mongrels would be mixed blood or something they chose not to and the mongrels made a deal with the devil literally <laughs> and then and this makes sense why she was praying earlier because normally werewolves are not a christian thing <laughs> so i'm like what is this and apparently in olden times she this other werewolf who decided not to go that direction was visited i believe i'm skipping a page no i guess i'm not but we're halfway through issue four 
uh, the uh, in the other werewolf was visited by oh this is it this is the panel is visited by an angel and I forget who to help give them help so essentially it's a it's a war now between two factions of one clan and since one of them pulled in for outside help the other is, the other is being visited by outside help so that this proxy war between heaven and hell is being fought in this clan of werewolves where one side of it wants to destroy humanity and remove us from the earth. So, okay. Um, we get back. Now we just get into more depth of this secret world uh, with the FBI agents. It kind of makes sense that all this stuff gets covered up and the normal people don't know about it. Uh, this just sets up where things are going from here. Another fight with, and I'm, I, I know who this is. I'm just not going to say another fight with whoever this is more background on the bad guys and their relationship with the vampires, um, more, you know, secret plane flying overhead, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. This is setting up the next issue, so I'm really not going to spoil any of it. Anyway, that's where this goes. So I think there's a lot of there, it's a very imaginative world. I like that. It's a little harder to get into because of problems I ran into in the in the lettering here and there. Okay, and then some of the coloring threw me off. I have seen. Um, I think I've seen some just inked pages from this if they were in promo material. I hope I'm not mixing that up with the next book I'm going to look at. And uh, and so the line art's fine. And he's much... I've been told by people drawing monsters is way easier than drawing people. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so the monster's faces and stuff are cool. At first I wondered if they're a little too upright, a little too human. But no, he's got his hunch going. So that's okay. They, they do hunch over a bit. Um, so the monsters are all good. The humans, the coloring becomes too plastic. It's it's an okay read. Uh, oh, yeah, I know what I want to say about this. When I was a kid, on Saturday or Sunday afternoon, there'd always be, you know, if I wasn't out doing something on Saturday, there'd be these uh, these movies on TV that were just older movies that they show at that time of day. And, and so you'd get, on either day, it might be like a Planet of the Apes film like the fourth planet of the apes film would show on a sunday afternoon like okay whatever and a lot of that 70s sci-fi with the downer endings you know um and so it they're not crap movies but they're not they're not necessarily what you call classics or or they're not always classics uh this is this is worth a read and that's about it it's not i don't think it's going to be a classic but it's kind of the saturday afternoon fun read i don't mind it in fact I kind of want to keep going with it. <laughs> and it's like, it, it's sort of like, oh, it's not that great here or there in terms of it's not this wonderful gift to comics, but I, I still want to st be, be reading it. So that's cool. Um, I did get the next two issues, which I haven't read yet. This is just the trade paperback. Um, I think a lot of his side art is pretty cool. And yeah, it's just too bad. I'm really disappointed that the binding on this is coming out. Uh, it's coming unglued. And that can be just my, you know, my copy or my end of the batch of copies. Get that press close again. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, like Godzilla and King Kong movies. Um, for me, I remember 9.30 or 10 a.m. was Godzilla movies on Saturdays after the cartoons or something like that. And then uh, Saturday afternoons was was uh, um, weird sci-fi, Planet of the Apes, that kind of thing. So did I like it? Yes. Oh, you can see, or can you see? the edge along here it's all becoming uneven yeah the glue came out dang oh that's too bad okay um you know everything everything goes in batches with printers and I, maybe i got the bad end of the batch rather than a bad printer so i guess i'm going to get a, a lot of little comics out of this <laughs> so yeah like godzilla and king kong movies exactly okay tuck this away get some water and yeah, writing good, art can be really good, lettering sometimes a little off kilter, um, coloring from good to odd. Um, the art, I think the art is okay. It's you know never as good as the cover, but it's it, the art didn't bother me reading it. I started trying to look at it with a more critical eye, and you know I just I couldn't be bothered to get into it that harshly. So, oh yeah, relentless consulter. <laughs> now I get to say negative things, um, but probably not what you're expecting. I need new bag and board, so I'm going to do that. So weird thing about my comics. Here we go. Number one, number one. Okay, Shelby Robertson's cover. 
which is part of the thumbnail for this video. And number two, this this is cool. I like I liked this image. This looked great in the pencils as well. This extra. Okay, so I get to show off covers. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna set this one aside. It's my reading copy. But what's really weird is uh, sometimes I get I get two books, like two exact copies of the same book. You know, um, maybe from Alterna if I really like a book. I'll, I'll go get a nice copy. I have a weird habit and assume that these are the same cover for the, the sake of discussion. I won't put it aside. Now the bag's all torn. That's why I spread the tape out. The, the cover. Okay. How do I say this? If they're in separate bags and boards, my bad reader dinged up copy goes in the front in the box. And then the nice one is behind it. But if I'm, I'm doing my, my double bag and board, which I had, you know, the two sided bags and boards that I use so I can put two books in one sleeve and they're, they're um, alkaline treated on both sides of the board. Then the, pr the, the nice, good, pretty one goes in the front and the reader goes in the back. So if they're separate, the reader's in the front and that, yeah, why, I don't know why I have these weird little ways I do things, but and then I, I've slowly been figuring out everybody has weird little ways we do things. So, <laughs> so anyway, there we go. So come on out. So we looked at these prints already. Um, I really like, and I'm going to talk about this thing. I really like Shelby Robertson's artwork. I think he has improved a lot. By the way, on that note, my first impression of 94, if I understand that it is older work of his from the 90s uh, of this, I was, a, oh, that's that's all glare. You can't see that. There you go. Now you can see it. This one. Um, I forgot that this was old work from the 90s of his, that it's uh, three issues. And when I opened it and I saw some of that 90s style artwork, it was like, oh, this is earlier in his career. So he's an inker and he's a really good inker. But his own artwork was something that he grew through. And this is his own artwork. And so he's definitely grown a ton, I think. Um, it, I'll just say it now. I'll say it again when I when I do that book. In the 90s, people put, or, or what just less experienced artists do, they put so many stretch lines on things that even on faces, things tend to look like if you stretch a plastic bag and then a little bit and then let it go again. And yeah, like that. So anyway, um, so I saw a lot of that texturing from newer amateur artists, um, newer or amateur. And then I opened it up and there's one character face. It's a really, it's part of a double page spread in there. And it's like, Oh, this is very early for Shelby. Okay. Yeah. But he has seriously matured as an artist. Um, does a great job. And, and this is an example. And so these are both number ones. I'm going to contrast <laughs> Shelby <laughs> with this one. <laughs> oh, I should. Oh yeah. These, these both have the same back. I can put that aside. Oh, notice signed by Mr. Nicholas Gear. I hope it's not Jeer, um, but I think it's Gear, G E E R. And I'm going to slide in. You can still get his comics. You don't have to wait for the next campaign. Why he sent everything in blue tape, I don't know. But it's a good bag and board. There we go. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> we got another print. Come on out. good print. I think this is Andy Smith. I can tell by the torso. Yes, right there. Andy Smith. You can, t you can always tell by his torsos. Um, a lot of his people are doing sit-ups, like lots and lots of sit-ups. He is Mr. Abs. So. Okay. This cover by Billy Tucci. I am not impressed. Um, it was embarrassing to look at at first. I Now, I don't... I've talked before on streams about how much time does oh crystal mcgee is here hey crystal sorry i stopped looking up at the screen good to see you thanks for being here um so if you missed it crystal this is a great cover by Sh by uh, shelby and uh we got other good prints by other good people like andy smith here but this is not the style of she andy uh, billy tucci's regular book he at least did enough color grading that you can't totally tell at first glance that this is just a photograph of the moon dropped in you know, he, he, he worked it. So it fits. That's good. The rest of this, honestly, the pile of people down here that he's standing on, 
got more attention than than like he did um as one person put it to me earlier is he wearing a diaper or nappy like this is just bad and his arms don't his arms are too short like he doesn't actually fit and he's i know that in most of the the artwork about him he is a little bit leggy but this is like what the, dang you know like you know his arms are way too short and you know they, they don't reach down as far as they should if you kind of do the, the whole compass measuring thing like they, they they only come down to where my fingernails are um no <laughs> this is this is bad uh no abs like no abs at all like come on take a lesson from andy here and so no this is even even this one which i i forgot who drew this it's still you know the arm sticking out is still the right proportion it comes down further further to the hip this one has foreshortening because it's bent you know it, it bent in or whatever um and you know yeah he's a bit of a leggy character everybody just kind of draws him that way uh and sure his torso here is a little more boxy but you know it may and it but his torso at least makes sense with his head so okay you're going to give a thinner torso you're going to give a thinner head but something is just off this is yeah all right so i've talked before about how many hours uh you do per page and then and the cover is very different from a page and a double page spread on the interior I, I, I don't think there are any in this one there are in the next one but a double page spread is two pages bear that in mind and i asked graham nolan this guy i asked graham nolan about because uh, he, he put a, a, out an update that he was doing a double page spread and he was on day three of the double page spread so i i um i posted him, that to him on twitter and said hey you know i'm kind of interested in how long things take how many hours stuff like that hey hex allen um got busy and forgot about the streams ah that's okay i understand oh hopefully hex allen will be changing times and maybe i'll be at a more convenient time in the like in the next month or in a month i don't know we'll see but anyway so graham nolan um he didn't understand when i said dps <laughs> even though i'm quoting to him like with an image his update about the double page spread <laughs> so it's, it's like He's a busy guy. Okay. He's got way more important things to deal with than me. <laughs> so, so anyway, I defined for him double page spread and said, you know, I'm, I'm interested in how long this takes. And I, I, I wanted to try and be careful. Maybe I was too careful about how my question might come across because I, I don't want it to come across antagonistically. I'm just taking a survey to get realistic time frames on how long things take. No big deal. You know, um, and so I asked him and he didn't quite get back to me. I did message him again and didn't get a response. So at that point, you're like, okay, don't pester the guy. <laughs> Just, you know, he's got more important work to do. But um, I bring up Graham Nolan uh, because of, uh, and, and that just how long do things take has, has been a topic on a previous stream where I was trying to say, everyone complains about late books, but you know, if you're a full-time artist, you still have to take side art. So if you're doing 40 hours a week that gets bitten into by side art, how long, hey Mobigs, how long does a page take? How many pages per week, per month can you get out there? And the mainstream, I, I can say this really quick now because I've been over it a bunch of times. Uh, the mainstream uh, was, used to be a page a day in pencils and inks or in, in pencils. And a lot of these guys ink themselves. So they short on the pencil and then, and then details and inks, unless you're Rob Willis. And then it's all the details all the time. So hail, hail to you too. Thanks for showing up. Um, so, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So, um, but for quality it takes longer. So I arbitrarily said two and a half sounds good. That's 20 hours per page. And, and that would be for these pros like Graham Nolan, who does way, I think way shorter than 20 hours per page. The, th the one of the caveats is I know pages differ and I know that, oh, Jason Black. Hey, you're here. Thanks for being here, man. I know that pages differ and, and we all know that you know, there are averages. Like I get that. But Grant, one of Graham's answers to me was, well, a lot of, well, it depends. I'm accustomed to the, it depends answer. I'm a, you know, I got my personal trainer cert and my, my lifting coach cert. Okay. It depends is like, is how we talk about everything. Hail all the above people. I've been listening for the past 20 minutes. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for stepping out of the dark. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, you know, we don't want to bother Graham too much. Uh, and I hope I didn't give him a wrong impression, but yeah, I know how things generally work. I, this is not my first day on earth. And, you know, you don't want to be rude and say that to somebody, you know, to be like, well, no, hey, dude, you know, I'm just asking a question. No, 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 no. So, you know, there are different time frames. And why do I bring all that up? Um, I don't know how Billy Tucci does his commissions. So if when he got hired for this, he could sell himself by the hour. 
<laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> Don't get mental images. Gross. Anyway, he could be he could be selling his services. Yeah, this is going this is going bad. Plate. Mo shows up and everything goes down. <laughs> so, <laughs> why did you bring all that up? Yes, I'm getting there. Um, this looks like he phoned it in. I mean, it it really does. This is not an honorable job, but for all I know he sold the the um you know an artist is his own business he can set his own standards and okay that's that's a drawing that's i thought that was something on the page <laughs> um you can't i don't think you can see it with that well on the camera but there's like a the the smoke turns into a little a little line i thought it was a piece of thread but adhd let's go back to it um for all i know uh in the way he does business i have no idea uh he could did he there you go he could be doing it like, okay, I will do the entire page at a one hour quality for so many hundred dollars, or you give me three hours, you know, you pay for three hours, you're going to get three hour quality, you know, or is he just charging by the page and, and he spends a limited number of hours on it that, that he just tells you, yeah, I give you 20 hours. You pay me this for the, for the cover. That's it. You know, I have no idea how he runs his business, but this looks like, he didn't give his all to um, to Mr. Gear, and uh, I think he shorted him. It's just not a good cover. I know. I like this stuff. I like how it's very pencil sketchy down there as a style, but the main character needs to have been given better attention, proper proportions, things like that. And again, back to the moon. He did. He did at least put the effort in to make the moon blend really well, so it doesn't stand out as a photo. All right. How much do you want for a double page? <laughs> I don't know what they get paid. All right. Blue is basically saying Tucci has a convention booth at the no tell motel. <laughs> oh man. Um, Harbinger motel. Oh, right. You're pretending you didn't, uh, that you weren't watching that Mo. I don't know what the Harbinger motel is. So I just get to move on freely. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Jason black. Uh, okay. Alrighty. Nolan, on the other hand, his only commission here is a head sketch and it's, it's a Nolan head sketch. Um, you can see the pencil lines in it. That's fine. Uh, you know, some of the extra pencil goes in there. That's just how they go. This what the original for this was sold on the campaign or was up for sale on the campaign. And I need water. He, uh, he doesn't phone it in like ever, you know, if you want a Nolan head sketch and you're going to see, pardon me, look at all the tea stains in there. <laughs> I drink tea anyway, you know, and you're going to, you're going to see this. That's, you know, the forms are still correct. The forms are in the expression and everything. He got the character. So he didn't shortchange on, on anything there. And I think that's honorable. Good way to go. Okay. Got water. All right. So there we are. Dean's game. There was this ridiculous line early in the game. Does this look like the Harbinger motel to you? Uh, how can we know what that looks like? I, Okay. I'm not up on Dean's game. Let's talk about the book. All right. Uh, I assume that's uh, Dean comics mate from Australia. You think the camera stopped that I froze. This thing is telling me I have low bandwidth. Give me a moment. All right. Things are going to get dicey for a sec. There, I'm not getting a disconnect notification in YouTube. And is the camera okay again? Having network issues. All right. On now. Good. Okay. Ah, read credits. Read the credits. Here we go. Nicholas Gear. Artist is uh, Sika Murti, M-U-R-T-I-S-I-K-A. Colors by Walter Perea, P-E-R-E-Y-E-Y-R-A. -E -E yeah, P-E-R-E-Y-R-A. Letters by Eric Wiat Hers. Yeah, that guy. Main co cover, Billy Tucci. Homage cover, because this is an homage to an old Superman, or old action comics, sorry, um, by Shelby Robertson, right? And then thank you to a whole bunch of people. And I think those are his backers. <laughs> so, by the way, Starcross Comics, you can still get this book on the Starcross Cross Comics website. However, he is also running a campaign for number two. Oh, 
Okay. Hello to Mo. I interrupt myself. I got to stop interrupting myself. Yeah, you've been freezing most of the time I've been here. Dang it. Here for <laughs> here for that gorgeous voice, not your gorilla hands. <laughs> uh, my hands are getting less hairy. I must be getting old. Uh, I got to stop that. I need to get TRT. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's see yeah um starcross comics is a place you can go and get these books along with a whole bunch of other books we'll we'll just scroll through the website real quick before we close and then he's also on fund my comic for number two which i think may have an add-on to get number one again and this is the main cover so you might you might be stuck with this cover I'm, I'm, i'm sorry all right so we're on now look at the book i like the establishment i like the flow all of it's good we're being given two cops I like the continuity that I hope gear put in this and not just his artist doing it for him. This old guy walking down the street may be the guy we see later. They're parked at a corner. The perspective on this has a little bit of weirdness to it. Like this is an intersection. Are they parked in the middle of the intersection on the other side? I think they're catty corner or kitty corner, whatever it is. So here's the intersection and we see the church over where my thumb is, but they're parked way over here. Uh, which finger? I need another finger. They're, they're parked over there where I have no fingers. <laughs> like <laughs> So a so, little bit of a weird perspective there. That's a problem in the artwork. Easily overcome. I don't think it matters. It doesn't take me out of the story. So um, I had to look for it. In fact, I kind of had to think about it just now too to say, is that right? Uh, what's funny is in my town, there is a church building that is shaped exactly like this. So that's kind of cool. And also like, like this... Um, you know, where there's barely any sidewalk around it. And there, there's what used to be the sidewalk was way out here. And then easements come in twice and stuff like that. And, you know, so then all the houses get ruined because the sidewalks are now right up against them. And anyway, uh, let's see. So what, what we have established is old cop, new cop. He's hired. He wants to go after the gang that's selling a new drug called mist. And it's described as a, uh, not an amphetamine, a stimulant. Uh, uh, so Coletta, C-O-L-L-E-T-T-A, is moving more mist into the, So Coletta is the gangster. And uh, mm, yeah, okay. Coletta is the gangster and the mayor. Sorry, I left that out. They describe mist in here somewhere. It is described as a stimulant, but I forget what else they described it as. Uh, so some things don't make sense, uh, but everybody's getting addicted to it and it's killing people. So he wants to go after Coletta because he knows that Coletta uh, got the mayor elected or is the mayor, got the mayor elected. Uh, Marco Coletta recently established crime boss, establishing a foothold in Minneapolis by funding his, his uh, the ranking city officials with proceeds of of his lucrative drug trade. Okay. This is Coletta, not, not the mayor. Sorry, my head jumped, whatever. And he's getting a file on this particular cop, Benjamin Peer, uh, Pearson. So Ben Pearson, that is our hero's name. And he's getting the file, paying somebody off to get the file. Coletta is not the mayor, but people go to him. Uh, so this is introduced. He wants to take down Coletta, the gangster. Old guy is telling him don't. Um, and here... So now we we see this dude on the sidewalk. So a little continuity there. Dude was on the sidewalk in the first page right there. He is collapsing and dropping a bottle typically full of mist. They see what's going on. They call it in for an ambulance right away while they are attending to him. Some, they get, they get shot in a drive-by and he gets one shot off that happens to kill one of the two shooters. There's the driver. I've, I've got to get out of here. And the other shooter popped out of the, the van, dead guy back here. Moving on quickly we jump there are a lot of jumps in this i think ben pierce in is his porn name nice all right so um he's got a lot of a lot of jumps in here where we don't have to live out every single scene that reminds me of a of a lot of a more classic comics where yeah we'll get full action scenes but here he's just trying to get the story out and we don't we don't have to go into unnecessary detail drawing how they drove away or whatnot we can turn the page and get the idea of it's later we don't even have to have an it's later in the corner either it just works so um 
they're they're bringing a corpse and his partner into the hospital, etc. It comes over the radio that they found the driver and the other shooter. Yes, we got him. So back in Coletta's office, there's a there's a briefing and a report. I had to reread this. It was kind of fun, but man, it went by fast. <laughs> so um, my criticism, my heavy criticism will be for the second one. We see something going on here. And now we get into more of this is like old Batman. There's a toy maker a character. Uh, I forget his name. Geppetto. Geppetto is the name of this guy. He builds toy robots that explode and whatnot. And they are now being used on Christmas Day to bomb the uh, uh, the police department. So Christmas Day, police department. So we get our context there. We can read things, etc. And he's being called into work. So this is a ruse to get him out so that he can be kidnapped. Notice the green over his face as he's getting conked on the head and dragged into a van. These two henchmen are complaining about having to team up with, with Geppetto. And they're noticing, hey, he's late. Yeah, something must have happened. Our gunshot wound victim is now out of the hospital the next day. And we just jump. It's a very jumpy comic, which was... Uh, yeah, okay. DP was a... I thought it was double page, but never mind. Just... <laughs> I needed a haircut. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys and Omarosa. Oh, yes. Omarosa is a lady, if you can't tell, you know, by her icon. <laughs> so, yeah, that's her. Okie doke. Jump back into it. So, he's now in Geppetto's workshop being filled full of drugs. That scene goes by, the cops bust in, and they're, you know, gearing up for him. Whoops. But here, he's kind of dropping the syringe, and he says, uh, what's he having that needle? And as he's dropping the syringe, you can barely see it. So this could have been done a little bit better to show us what he's doing. And you have to figure out that he just injected himself. So while on one hand, we don't need to be shown every little detail. On the other hand, we do hit a spot where we needed a little more detail, like maybe an inset. So I like this panel, but it, it maybe needed an inset before it to show us him injecting himself with something that turns him into this giant gorilla who starts taking out the cops. While the fit as a fiddle cops are being taken out, um, the partner comes over to our now transformed dude and or ben pearson and is she related to camel moon sure am i think the sure am is female not um and i like the happy face there <laughs> but uh camel moon is another creator who who uh hangs around a lot with michael bancroft and he created another book called boots and heels so there it is just so you know um all right so, did you, uh, yeah, my, sorry, who Camel Moon is just made me think of like 20 other things. <laughs> so, focus. For some reason, the gorilla is not attacking over here and they are out of the way, even though they were in the same room just, just prior. So, here they are. Here they are still in the same room. This is very comic booky because it's a comic book. It's like, you know, perfect in terms of that. Um, yeah, he also made Hail Salad. All right, so anyway, I think he's nailing a lot of the what a classic comic book is, and it's great. So it's, that's all enjoyable. I don't care about the jumpiness except for that one part where you had to figure out he was dropping a needle because it was too small to see. And he takes out our baddie. Um, so you do get some action scene, which is really cool. And then follow up in the hospital, nice scenery page. So after all the multi-panel action, very quick, <gasps> we get breathing room. Okay, so that's fine. And we're ending with these full panel pages and, a, and exposition. Hey, you know, I can transform back at will. That's really cool. The They still have the gorilla locked up. Um, d -d 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 -d. Not related to any other moons out there. It's not a moon if it's not out there. <laughs> Get it? The, anyway, it's a butt joke. And kind of a cheesy ending. Welcome aboard the Tin Soldier, they call him. So there is a bit. Oh, and these are other comics available from um, Starcross. So Starcross is a Christian comic site. I have a lot of their comics, but not all. I get a lot of cringe vibes from the um, evangelism comics because uh, it's just not how I do things with people. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, yeah, I evangelize, but not not the 
there, there's a problem in evangelical culture with just not understanding how cheesy they are. And it's not the cheese, it's the cringe. But anyway, a lot of these other books are really cool. Black Blossom is a book that's out there. Uh, at first, you want to punch her because she's got this smarmy grin. By the end of book two, she is getting her her just she is just getting beat down, <laughs> like put in her place. You're like, oh, thank God, I can continue with the series now because she's not Riri Williams. So, ah, uh, oh, now Blue is making jokes. Yeah, uh, so a little bit of cheese here, but notice he ended with three splash pages, even though they don't reach the edge. I know, but they're still full page panels. All right. Graham Nolan. We love Graham Nolan. And all right, the pretty one, the pretty one goes on the front. The reader goes on the back. Whoops. Uh, Billy Tucci, why? Why did you do it that way? And the one thing about the reader going on the back is that it, it has its cover partially obscured by the tape. So there we are. And that's kind of how I realized I fell into this just accidentally doing it two different ways and then figured out I was doing it two different ways. So anyway, let's move on to number two. So really recommended. I like it. It now, when I read number two, I had to ask Nick or Nicholas, um, is it a children's book? And he said, no, it's a teen book. Okay. So it does, it, it isn't so complex. And I'm going to go back to complexity after I finished flipping very quickly through number two, because you can't help but be quick on it. Um, Number two is just way simple. That's not a book. So for number two, we got great covers. I think the, I think this is... I'll just look at it. I won't guess. No, no, I'm mixing them up. This is not Chris Graves. This was... Mm -hmm, Robert Powers? Yeah, Robert Powers did this cover in my hands. The artist is different. It's Alessandro Ventura. And then uh, Colors and Letters by... Eduardo Garcia. All right. And then cover C is by Nick, Nick, uh, sorry, can't remember his name. Eric Ninotowski. There we go. I almost call him Nick. So there's Robert Powers. Great cover. Well drawn. You know, a lot of time went into that. You can tell. Here's Chris Graves, who I think is getting hired in other places to do good things. Awesome. This is a, I, I really like this. The, the cant on the, the view and everything. It's just, Perfect. It doesn't just disrupt the spine too much. It's just a little off. That's, you know, as he should be. That's cool. I'm sad to make one of these my readers, but it's this one. So, oh, yeah. And just to give you a nice view of the original extras while I put books away, there's that. Okay. And then on the back side of the book here, I forget who drew this. I can't read that name. Harper? Howard? Anyway, nice drawing on the back. I think this is well done. You know, it doesn't have to be colored. And nothing on the back of that. So a lot of people involved in this project, making it pretty. All right. So I think the writing in number two suffered a little bit for being quick and brief. And less complex. So we got our complexities, minimal complexities. Um, it is a comic book. Oops, I put one away that I wasn't supposed to. Ha! All right, I'll take that back out. But we got our complexities in number one. Number two is really more of just a setup for number three. Oh, yeah, since you new guys are here, I have to say it again. Uh, I hate e-begging, but if you like the stream, please click the thummy thing. Okay. And Eric Ninotowski's C cover goes with his i don't know what letter this was j or something on on tragedy tragedy has a lot of covers i can almost line them up um almost line them up but yeah he's doing the the fastball special throw like like um colossus would do with wolverine here that's what this is modeled after mm -hmm. there won't be any trumpets blowing come judgment day on the bloody morning after one tin soldier rides away <laughs> okay Is that from somewhere or did you just make it up? Because that's kind of cool. Anyway, here's Eric Nielotowski's art, and you probably know I'm a big fan of his. 
I might do is re-sleeve these in the double sides where these are on the back of the other two, like that. Putting things away nice and gentle. Whoops. There we go. It's an old song. Okay, cool. I should definitely look that up. Let me... Can I... No. Oh, it doesn't let me do that. <laughs> All right. It doesn't let me copy the text. Oh, wait. I can copy text over here. Do, 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 do. Copy. Copy. New tab. Whoa. Too many new tabs. Paste. Search. And then just go back to that later. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Number two. Put those aside. All right. So this one starts out awesome cover. We've read the credits. Problem number one. Um, there are typos in here. There's the wrong there in one of these word balloons, but Coletta is here, the, the gangster, and his men are asking, or no, he's, yeah, his men are asking for him, where did the shipment of drugs go? Because fewer and fewer uh, shipments are making it into the, the city. And then we just dr jump to outside the sewer where he's a little, he's smiling, but he's a little uncomfortable with the parade going on. So notice we're getting a double page spread. Oh, I'm sorry, a DPS. There we are. Yeah. Um, but no, we're getting a double page spread. Oh my gosh, it's really him. So there's a lot of implied things have happened. People are aware that this thing exists and we didn't have to go th sit through all the, the publicity and whatnot. Oh. Okay. Oh, I can feel my throat starting to go. All right. With people not needing to sit through all the publicity, I just remembered I should be using like announcer voice where you read the weather in a certain way. But anyway, um, um, it's hard for me to focus on a book and focus on, on lilting my voice all over the place. So anyway, when I used to do radio, I was I actually got a good habit of it. So, um, and he, he's saying, uh, are we really sure we should be doing this? Look, people need this and they need hope in the city. All right. So double page spread. And here, Coletta, they inject him with some, or Coletta's gangsters are injecting the guy who failed them or whatever with something and dumping him into the sewer. Okay. Another double page spread that protesters are now coming up saying, we don't need a superhero for a cop. Uh, uh, he's no hero, no justice, no peace. Uh, yeah, he's another one of the same. And in there, there's there are some, yeah, a lot of the defund the police comes up and... Let's see, somebody over their, their loudspeaker is yelling, last thing we need in this city is a super-powered cop, which is really hard to chant. It's too long. You know, you're not going to get your hey, hey, ho, ho on that one. Too many syllables. I think somebody bought these as drawn in. Um, why is this dude smiling like that? Anyway, announcement over the police. He should not be smiling. Announcement over the police radio is that a riot has started. I'd like to say that so far... This looks like a protest, not a riot, but it could be. The speed lines indicate maybe they're walking really quickly and not just ambling. So he seems happy, <laughs> but um, parade, stay where you are. SWAT is on the way. We suddenly jump. I was told comics are jumpy. So, uh, you know, who's this guy? They tell you who they are. They're really tired of not getting credit for what they are. So this, this is a, an interesting way to expand the world that there are other superheroes. Um, I, I want to click that. Maybe he's smiling because it's police brutality time. Oh, Oh, that hurts. Okay. I'm not anti cop. I'm just sick of the crap from cops. How do I put that? The bad cops are ruining a lot and their attitudes are spreading. And other cops have told me, yes, the ad bad attitudes get spread by bad apples. So anyway, so these guys jump in. We don't know who the hell they are. Um, he looks like an Android of some kind <laughs> and, and there's an awkward page coming up. Um, turns out he's a child. <laughs> I think he's a child. So these three, they join powers and this guy says he's not going to hurt anybody. He's not going to injure anybody. She apparently can just grow sp uh, vines out of thin air. So she's some sort of elemental. He's a speedster and this guy's, uh, does telekinesis police brutality time. I know I saw inks of this. I think the inks for these page, these two pages were on the campaign and they looked really good. So that goes back to the other book I looked at where sometimes coloring can detract from, that's the word I was looking for, detract from good lines. Um, Got to be careful not to color in a way that makes the lines look worse. So anyway, that's the other book. 
Uh, so th these things were okay. They looked really cool, the crash and whatnot. So what happens here, took me a moment the first time I read it. These guys, who the hell are they? Say, take her out, aiming for her. So they're somehow in on the protest going on. It's a little too much implied. So now we're getting to, it's it's quick and it leaves certain things implied, but I think he's leaving too much implied. So this starts to become where, what I talked about once before, where we're taking a short story and stretching it over the page count. So, hey, Crazy Mad, thanks for being here. Hey, Blue and Chat, I appreciate you being here. Um, this is the last book I'm looking at uh, before we look at a couple of uh, websites, things. So, anyway, uh, so what happened, they go for her, and it is told, I think, a little too quickly. Um, I have to do something, says the guy who says he's not going to hurt anybody, and he telekinetically, he's back here, little little guy, pulls up the, the pavement or the asphalt to protect her by the car crashing. And he's, and so we don't know who these gangsters are uh, unless they're from the prior book and I just don't recognize them. So whatever they're part of the protest against the tin, tin soldier. And he's worried in large lettering here. <laughs> oh my God, what have I done? Um, and he get, they get out and he's very relieved that they're not hurt, you know, that they, they were fine in, in their crash for having gunned it just at, at her just there. Um, so this is a little weird where people are presuming who each other are and notice we're getting closer to more splash pages here. So this was just a very, very quick little story and just a hail. Okay, cool. Uh, very quick little story where our villains are just the defund the police protesters. And I think more could have been done. And this leads into to number three. So saying hello to everybody. Okay, cool. Uh, sup, crazy mad? Just hanging out, waiting for tonight's next installment of Dear Men versus Lesbians, uh, the the game that contains neither or gameplay. <laughs> wow, I am missing out on something. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's on Dean's channel. Uh, Dean, the Australian artist, not the other Dean's. Anyway, we're moving towards full page splash, or you know, splash pages here, full page panels. But the cop, very little dialogue here. So the cops are come, are speeding over. They get to, you see the mound she made roping people in. And the cop says, uh, what, what on God's name happened here? And of course, the tin soldier, likewise, he wasn't there to witness it. But they get the answer from this really tiny dude, the speedster, who says, we thought you, sh uh, we thought you boys in blue, uh, cheesy. We thought you boys in blue could use a hand. Okay. This is a teen book. This is why it struck me as a child's book. I don't mind teaching people to respect cops. That way they have better judgment when they get older and see that some cops are bad people. So, um, de -de 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 -de. <laughs> Thank you, Mo Biggs. I can't believe the villains are defund the police protesters and he didn't hire Mike Barron to write it. <laughs> you know, I skipped that book by Barron because it just didn't look like anything I wanted to be involved in. I don't know. Um, so this is what made me think this is a kid's story. And he says, no, it's for teens. So, all right. It, it just gets really quick. Almost another full page splash. You know, hey, can we, you know, and it's as if nothing needs to be explained over here. That simplicity made me think too much is being skipped in this one where, you know, we just thought you could need use some help. Well, who are you guys? You know, stuff like that. All right, that's been up long enough. Um, she's getting a selfie, but a minute ago he was just grumbling that they're sick of not getting the credit they they deserve. So maybe they're happy now they're getting credit they deserve. Uh, uh, all right, let's start cleaning up here. And the the SWAT team, which was originally on the riot, is taking away people. And then we come back, and this is cool. This is what you use a splash page for, even though it has a border. I know, but this is cool. Um, the only thing I don't like about this on books in general is, and I see this in DC books all the time. You, uh, Baron swears it wasn't anything political, but it totally was. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Anyway, you turn a page and you're like, Oh, there's the surprise page right here. And I have to finish turning the page, pretend I didn't see it and read up to it. I actually gained a habit at one point of getting my eyes to just do this right away. So I wouldn't see that page. <laughs> but dc comics does that all the time <laughs> anyway uh so we, we're drawn back in i like this we're, we're bringing coming back down into a splash and then a splash page see splash <laughs> get it 
because <laughs> I'm sorry I said it. What do we got here? Yes, Jason, I'm about to get lied to about lesbians. What? Okay, what are you guys talking about, please? <laughs> anyway, this is a good monster reveal. I like it. Um, it looks like his whole head is a jaw. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, and then we're we're back in 1945, and we're being the, you know I like these large pages that we get a whole feel for the room that they are in, and it's a nice scene setting. I think a border would have helped on this just to separate these from one to the other. Hey, Tank Ferret. I'm sorry I'm ending kind of soon. Little hellos. Page turn reveal fail. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he says, your country uh, appreciates your sacrifice. And, you know, what's he doing there? So he's getting into this thing. He looks like he's in anguish. He's probably being live frozen. And then it ends with, we don't know what the future holds, but at least we know uh, you will be here to answer the call. So are super people way more common in this world? You know, what is what is going on there? D -d -d -d. Nice art. It is. I like these full pages. And I asked him, I you know, not to be antagonistic towards Nicholas, about the the the, um, the, the idea of stretching a story out over the pages. And he said, no, it, it really is because it's a setup for what comes next. And he wanted this nice, large, you know, you see the room you're in kind of thing. Like I just described it and it, it works. I really do like the scenery and you know, the, the, the thing you get from this is just, it's a cool scene. So it, it it's fine to be a large page. It just struck me as, wow, that was a very short book with a very fast read and it's a setup for what comes next. So here is this mystery dude soldiers, sacrifice for your country his uh suit don't know what's coming next um but for number three i would say to make the book better we need more layers it's kind of like old you know he does have two things going on here but they're they're one than the other in the simpsons if you go to old old simpsons there were two plots going on on at once always an a story and a b story so here we go uh, Blue, we're due over here on Deed's channel. Wrap this up and come watch. We're six hours into a really bad game. You haven't missed anything. Okay, <laughs> thank you. On top of that, Dean won't fix the sound, so he's booming with the character echo. Echoes everything they say. It's really, really bad. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, I'll make this quick, and I'll make showing off the websites really quick. I'll just show that they exist. So to, to make this book better, I think he knows, needs to go back to what he had going on in the first book, and show more of the intrigue and multi levels. I think he has set that up to do so. We've got the soldier, we've got other heroes, uh, we've got the monster in the sewers, and now we have something coming from 1945. So if he can make a little bit, he can make a more interesting read and a slower read if we just layer these things and have multiple stories going on at once simultaneously with little intersection points. I think that'd be a great improvement. And that's my wrap up on the book. So a quick share on the websites just to show they exist. And then we will unpeel the orange present window share. Okay. So because everybody's going to go, we will make this very fast. So I don't know why the little thing isn't playing here and it's not even loading for me. Oh, cause I, uh, because I, I change VPNs, it does this. Starcross Comics. Why are things not loading? Holy cow. Uh, no. Okay. I destroyed the stream by their graphics not showing. But Starcross Comics is where to get a whole bunch of books. Flip through that one. Lone Wolf Comics is where um, this and other titles written by the same guy, drawn by other people. So check out Lone Wolf Comics. And then... Doo -doo -doo. Tin Soldier is on fundmycomic.com and Robert Moltari. I hope I'm saying that right. This I did put a link to his Kickstarter profile so that there is that. Go check it out. Thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate your time. Click the like button if you would. Tweet something about the stream. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll go watch you guys over on that other stream. Have a good night.